in rural southern Illinois, a toy company began selling realistic baby dolls to expectant mothers. But apparently, after the mother had her child, the toy baby would start crying. Eventually, the rocking motion advertised to calm it down wouldn't work, and you couldn't get it to stop without shaking it. Eventually, when it started crying, the parent would have to beat it, and the beatings and thrashings would have to get harder and harder to get it to be quiet. The only thing that seemed to shut the baby doll up permanently was to bash its head against the wall to destroy whatever mechanism triggered the crying. On more than one occasion though, neighbors called the authorities to report child abuse, and when the police arrived, they found the bloody remains of infants smeared across the walls and the floor. In most cases, the mother couldn't understand why the police were there. She just got rid of the stupid doll as she rocked a baby-shaped bundle in her arms. During the summer of 1983, in a quiet town near Minneapolis, Minnesota, the charred body of a woman was found inside the kitchen stove of a small farmhouse. A video camera was also found in the kitchen, standing on a tripod and pointing at the oven. No tape was found inside the camera at the time. Although the scene was originally labeled as a homicide by police, an unmarked VHS tape was later discovered at the bottom of the farm's well, which had apparently dried up earlier that year. Despite its worn condition and the fact that it contained no audio, police were still able to view the contents of the tape. It depicted a woman recording herself in front of a video camera, seemingly using the same camera the police found in the kitchen. After positioning the camera to include both her and her kitchen stove in the image, the tape then showed her turning on the oven, opening the door, crawling inside, and closing the door behind her. Eight minutes into the video passed, and the oven could be seen shaking violently, after which point, thick black smoke could be seen emanating from it. For the remaining 45 minutes of the video, until the camera batteries died, it remained in a stationary position. To avoid disturbing the local community, Police never released any information about the tape or even the fact that it was found. Police were also not able to determine who put the tape in the well or why the height and stature of the woman in the video didn't come close to matching the body they'd found in the oven. While honeymooning in Maine, my wife and I stopped in the picturesque town of Booth Bay on a particularly dreary and rainy day. Since our planned picnic was out of the question, we sought shelter in a dilapidated little antique store near the harbor. While my wife inspected the large chests and side tables near the door, I eagerly examined the antique tools and seafaring equipment inside the glass sales counter at the back. Being a collector of optics and mariner's instruments, I hoped to find a sextant or perhaps an old leather-bound telescope. A particularly interesting piece caught my eye. 
It appeared to be a heavy brass flashlight bearing a worn brown patina but remarkably modern in design. I asked the shopkeeper but he could only tell me it was found in the same old sailor's chest as several of the compasses and the sextant also on display. He inquired as to whether I'd like to purchase it for five dollars or perhaps have it for free. It's worthless to me and nobody wants it. When I remarked about the price, he sighed wearily and then reached into the cabinet and retrieved it for me. Here, see for yourself, fella. The craftsmanship was wonderful, quite durable, and apparently handmade. Perhaps somewhere in Europe, worn lettering indicated it might be German or perhaps Austrian in origin. I twisted the bulb housing and a weak red beam swept out. Poking it into a dark corner of the shop, I was greeted with fantastic monotone swirls moving and entwining with each other like a pit of eels. As I stared further into this unusual projector kaleidoscope, my fanciful mind invented ghoulish faces and sinuous gnarled tendrils. Shutting the device off, I turned excitedly to the shopkeeper. Fantastic, I said. It must have an oil filter of sorts in the front of the lens. I have two Victorian kaleidoscopes, but none that are illuminated like this. You don't get it, do you? Nobody gets it. They all come back to return it after a while. The shopkeeper leaned on the counter, and I could see that he was breathing heavily. They all think it's some sort of trick, till they start seeing it when the lights turn off. That ain't no projection, mister. That damn thing. That light. It ain't making up those creatures. It's just letting your eyes see what's already there.